yesterday, or actually, let's start with Sunday. Sunday I was gonna get ready for this little two-night trip to, to Idaho. And I got up in the morning, and I got on my computer, and I saw one in one of the off-road forums that there were a couple guys, turned out three guys, um, doing a drive up around between Tollgate and Walla Walla in the Blue Mountains. And I had actually mapped that particular drive or something similar to it as something I wanted to do. And so I thought, well, this is an opportunity to go with some other people who are more experienced than me. And so I messaged them and they were coming from the Tri-Cities. And I met them up at Tollgate and we did about 70, 75 miles um, on trails and forest service roads up there. Some of it was pretty muddy. I don't think I got footage of the muddy part, but um, it was fun. You know, uh, just driving to drive, I find less interesting. Actually, I like stopping and taking pictures. So I, uh, I don't think I'll do a lot of that, but it was good to, we got through some pretty ugly mud holes and it was good to figure out what the truck would do and when I need to start getting a little worried. Um, and the guys who I went with were super nice and I learned a lot from them. So I was originally planning also to get up first thing on Monday morning and head out and try to do a couple hikes Monday and then come up and camp at Cottonwood Creek Campground, which is a few miles from the trailhead where I'm meeting Scott at 10.30 this morning. Um, but I ended up not getting home until after six o'clock on Monday. And I kind of didn't feel like just rushing off. So I took a leisurely morning, hung out with Sarah, went for some walks, went for a walk, and then drove and had a nice easy drive up to Cottonwood Creek Campground last night where I spent the night. I got there around 4.30, so, you know, it was early evening this time of year. And I stayed up and I took pictures of the stars, which were beautiful, before the moon came up. And then I climbed into bed at seven o'clock. I also cooked some food, which was really good. Actually, the little stove that came with the, with the camper, the alcohol stove, works really, really well. So then I slept all night, woke up a little after 7 this morning. Well, I spent last night at uh, Cottonwood Creek Campground, which is about two miles down the road from here. And it's now about 7.30 in the morning, 6.30 Pendleton time. And I'm gonna go walk up Cottonwood Creek Trail. There's a couple, uh, looks like uh, hunting camps right here. So I'll put on my vest, take a little hike, come back, get some breakfast, and then go meet um, Scott at 10.30 this morning for another hike. So this is the outermost point of this hike. I could keep going further, but I'm gonna go back and meet Scott. And I'm gonna have breakfast and do some other things before that. So back down the trail we go, back to the car. So I failed to mention that this Cottonwood Creek hike was hike number 69 in the trails in the Northwest. Um, which is one of the reasons Scott and I picked the particular hike we were doing later in the day, because it was near this one. Uh, it was a fairly uninteresting hike. Uh, I mean, it was pretty, but it was a long, rugged drive to get up there for a two-mile hike. Uh, however, it was another, you know, 10 to 15 miles on that horribly rutted or horribly washboarded dirt road to get up to where I was hiking with Scott 
Um, and I ended up not taking a lot of video or pictures from the hike with Scott. There's a few here that you'll see. But mostly we just chatted, which was really nice. And so we went about, uh, I don't know, close to 11 miles. It was basically five and a half miles yeah, up and then five and a half miles down. Um, so it was good workout. And it was kind of interesting walking in this creek bed <laughs> for, uh, I don't know, it must have been half a mile in and out of the creek bed. Uh, yeah, I think this is the rock I'm to call in. Yeah. Let's see if I can get a video of you falling in again. <laughs> But after we finished hiking, we decided we were going to uh, to go get dinner together. And the Cottonwood Creek Road, uh, according to my book, went 11 miles up and then back onto the main road. Whereas this was like 20 miles of what you're seeing here. So Scott said, oh, I'll follow you. Unfortunately... <laughs> This is what we ran into, and eventually the road was no longer open. So we ended up going 10 miles out of our way, basically. Actually, it was probably 8 miles up and 8 miles back. Um, so 16 miles out of our way on this beat-up road. It was only the last couple miles was, was like this. But, uh, yeah, we ended up uh, wasting an hour going up there and back. Um, and then we still had to go out the 15 to 20 miles on the washboard road following the lake before we got back out on the pavement. Uh, so that was exciting. This was just before the pavement. Um, and then we headed into Boise and had dinner. From there, I headed out to Bruno Dunes, which is hike number 70 in the Northwest Books, uh, or Northwest Walks. And I spent the night there and woke up early and got out walking before the sun rose. And as you can see, this was this was actually just an amazing, amazingly beautiful area. Um, I had no idea that this existed. It would be hotter than Hades in the summertime, I'm sure. But it was really lovely um, in November. And on this day, it was just a gorgeous day. And this was ended up being about a six and a half mile hike. Um, the book said it was five miles, but I think I ended up taking some detours. Um, and as you can see here, it's just starting to get a little sandy, but it got progressively more and more sandy as the hike went on. And probably four to five miles of it was in pretty soft sand. And let me tell you, my calves and my quads were feeling it the next morning it was it really worked me over um it was like walking on the beach except for it was even softer than than a lot of beach sand but as i said it was gorgeous it was beautiful there were all these cool tracks in the sand and then after a certain point you come around and there's this giant sand dune a couple smaller sand dunes and there's a lake a big lake in between the sand dunes and there are, was a ton of waterfowl on the lake, um, just uh, hundreds, thousands maybe of birds. And it was really, really beautiful. And I didn't get within shouting distance of another human being on the entire hike. I, I saw some people, you know, a mile away on top of the sand dunes at one point. And I'm pretty sure there were some people at an observatory on the other side of the lake. But it really felt like I was out there all by myself. And it was just uh, really beautiful. So I, I will go back to Bruno Dunes at some point. Uh, the campground was fine. It was a little expensive. It was like 20 bucks. Um, but I'd like to go back with the camper van and actually take Sarah and then take a little more time and walk around. Although, I think I ended up spending um, four hours probably on this hike. Uh, yeah, it was just 
really really lovely it, this was worth worth the trip right here so as I was coming around the end of the lake there was a path up the side of the sand dune and I decided to go ahead and walk all the way up on top of the sand dune there so that's where I camped last night And that ended up taking a lot more time and energy than I expected. It was deceptively tall and difficult. Um, but coming down was easier. Notice how I didn't make a video of me coming up this. <laughs> That's hard work. So it was a couple miles back to the car after I came around these lakes and then I jumped in the car and headed about 45 minute drive to Bruno Canyon um, which is only 12 miles away from where I was but I had to take a looping route and once again it was a rough washboard road and I showed up here around noon and I decided I'd make lunch uh, I think I mentioned how great my stove was so I decided I was going to go ahead and cook the rest of my leftover chili that Sarah had made, which was incredibly delicious, and um, sit here at the Overlook and eat my chips and chili, and uh, then take the short walk here. This is number 71 in the book. And honestly, I didn't do the whole walk because I started walking out and a dump truck showed up and it needed to get in to the space where my truck was parked. So I hiked back and then um, headed out after that. But I had a good time making lunch and eating and, uh, and the view here was beautiful. It is in fact a, uh, a bombing range. <laughs> so there were a lot of aircraft flying around and uh, the noise was a little annoying but that was a nice end to this so I ended up getting out of here around 2 o'clock I think um, and then had nothing to do but drive home the drive home wasn't bad at all I think it was uh, ended up being 5 hours and then I made back an hour maybe it was only 4 hours um, but uh, yeah uh, I'm going to have to do a review of this book of Northwest Walks at some point because it is interesting, <laughs> some of the walks that he's picked for this. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'll talk to you before long.